Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here tonight, and it's just great getting to worship with you. My name is Corey, uh, and we are kicking off a brand new sermon series tonight called Made. Uh, so a brand new kind of topic for the next few weeks that uh, tonight's really just the intro moment for it. Uh, you won't want to miss next week and the week after, because that's like the, the meat and potatoes of Made. But uh, we're going to set the stage for that tonight. And it's a sermon series that is all about this idea that we all have been made. Uh, we're here. We've been made. We're physically here. Like you're made you exist. Uh, but the topic is more beyond just existing. Uh, what if there's something more than just existing? What if there's something that we were made for a reason? What if there was some intentionality behind it or some purpose or some, some care taken? What if there was some intentionality for each of us being here. So for the next few weeks, we're going to kind of dive into that topic of what if we were made and what if there's a purpose? What if there's something more intentional to life than just existing and just being here? What does that mean for our faith and for our lives and for our relationships with other people? That's kind of the whole thing in a nutshell for the next couple of weeks. So we invite you on that journey with us. I think it's going to be really great. A little uh, introspective time to get a little bit uh, up in our feels to see how we're feeling, how we're doing. Uh, who are we made for? What are we made for? Answering some of those questions together. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, but tonight is all about just setting the stage for that. And there's a craze right now. Uh, maybe it's a little bit older of a craze. It might not be super exciting right now, but there used to be a craze where it was like Ancestry.com and 23andMe, all these like DNA testing websites to learn about your heritage and your upbringing and your ancestry, basically. And it's this idea of like, we want to know about our roots. We want to know about our heritage and our origin and what does that mean for our lives and and ultimately, it comes down to this kind of big point of where you come from matters. Where you come from in life and your history, your heritage, your ancestry, that matters to us because we end up putting a lot of our identity and a lot of our worth and a lot of our purpose and belonging wrapped up into these details of where have I come from? What's my history? What was I made for? And we begin to identify ourselves with our ancestry and what we were made for with how we fit in this world, the, the way that we interact with each other can be tied back to our ancestry. And we take all these DNA tests and a lot of people are getting excited about following the leaf and, and paying money to figure out your origin story because it matters of how you treat other people. It matters of where your family fits in the world in that sense of belonging. So we, we all at some point have maybe asked this question of where have you come from mattering and isn't there something more? And isn't there something more than just existing? There's a history to each one of our lives. There's a history to my life and a history to your life. There's a reason behind things. That's the where you come from matters. There's got to be more. And I have this thought uh, quite often. I used to have this thought a lot more, and I'm kind of working through it in my faith a little bit. But I think there's got to be something more than just like work, home, food. You got to eat, sleep, work home, food, sleep, work, home, and you get in this routine of just the cycle of things, and you go, what? I feel like there's got to be something more. Like, what am I missing? It's just going through the motions of work, home, food, sleep, and you just keep repeating that. Students, you add school in there from place to work, whatever that looks like for you. We go, how you see yourself and how you view how you've been made and where you come from matters. And so if that's true, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you this question of, what do you see when you look at yourself? If you were to look at yourself in a mirror, what do you see? If you were to be introspective and think a little bit personal right now, when you think about your life, when you think about your accomplishments, where you've come from, what do you feel? What do you see when you really kind of take a look at yourself in your life? Maybe for you, you're thinking it's pretty good. You go, I, I'm doing all right. Maybe some people look up to you. Maybe people want to be like you when they grow up. Maybe you have the dream job or maybe you've had success. So you just go, oh, I'm so dreamy. When you look at yourself, you think about yourself. Oh, I'm so just perfect. Maybe that's you. Uh, there's people in the room that maybe identify with that. But maybe, maybe where you come from or what you've been told by other people makes you feel a little bit less than. Maybe you question some things. Maybe you've gone through some things that have caused you to look in the mirror or to think about yourself and go, well, I think I'm just a little bit less than awesome. I, I might not really measure up. I'm, I'm fine. Like, it's okay, but I'm just, I'm just average because of your history or because of what people have told you, because of maybe what you tell yourself. And I think for a lot of reasons, it happens because of comparison. Uh, I think there's four or five different reasons why it happens. Comparison, especially with social media, it's so, so easy to compare yourself to other people's highlight reel. 
that's what's on Instagram, that's what's on Facebook, their best of moments, but you don't see what's behind the scenes of that, but we compare. We go, the grass is greener over there. Their pictures look better, their families look better, their friends look better, they have a better job, they have a better faith, just look at what they're posting. We compare. Maybe you critique yourself. Maybe you're hard on yourself and you go, well, I just feel less than when I think about myself because I have high standards. Maybe I think the world has raised the bar just in general for our culture where you got to measure up or you're not good enough. And you look around and you go, well, I, I critique myself against this really high bar that the world sets for us. Maybe for you, it's insecurity. You're always second guessing yourself. You're overthinking everything. And you go, well, I, I see something less than when I think about myself or look at myself because I'm just insecure. Maybe it's fear. Fear for failure, that's kind of like a my thing. I fear failure all the time. Uh, I still take risks, which is weird, but sometimes when you fear failure, you don't take risk. You get frozen in fear. You go to worst case scenario. You go, what if, and the what ifs hold you back from everything. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's doubt. Maybe you go, hey, I've got questions. I don't, I'm unsure about certain things. So when I think about myself, I go, well, I, I'm, I'm a little less than. I don't see the greatest thing possible when I think about myself because I have questions about what that might look like. And we've all been there. And I've been there, and I'll go back there again where all those kind of questions come into place, all those doubts or insecurities or critiques come back into our lives. We see it on social media. That's one for me. I think about my parents got divorced, so I go, well, when I think about myself, that, that leaves a mark on me, and so I'm a little less than. I think uh, sometimes in ministry, I go, I'm too young to do this. Like, what, what the heck? Like, I, I get to stand up here every week and, and just share some thoughts and get to do life with each of you. I'm too young for that. I don't really know what I'm doing. And all those things, when I think about myself, I go, well, I, I just don't measure up. I'm not just great. I, I'm a little bit less than awesome. And the truth is, the way you see yourself matters. The way you see yourself in this world and what you bring to the table, it has a direct effect to the way you live your life and the difference that you make in the world. And I think we all want to make a difference in the world. If I were to ask you just real quick, like, hey, hey, do you want to make a difference in our community? I don't think anybody in the room would go like, nah, I don't want to make a difference. Like, I just want to do this. No, we want to make a difference in the world. And so if there's a direct connection to how you think about yourself and your role in the world and the way that God's equipped you, if that has a direct connection to the impact you have in the world, what should we be thinking about ourselves? How can we look at ourselves and see something greater than maybe we already see. And you see the greatness for potential in other people. You react and you go, well, if you see greatness in yourself or if you see greatness in other people, you see that and you go, well, they're going to go and do big things. You show up, you lean in, you get excited when you see greatness on the horizon and you get excited for it. And this you often see in other people, unfortunately, not just in yourself. And we see it in other people, we go, oh, they're on their way to greatness. They're doing great stuff. They're, they're excited. They have huge potential. They're leaning in. They're getting it, but not me. When you see defeat or uh, I'm just made in the messy and my, whatever I'm making is just messy, it's not really great, or you see less than, or when you see average, or I'm just a copy of so-and-so, well, that's when you begin to kind of take a step back and you go, well, I'm just going to accept the average. I'm going to accept just life is fine. Maybe it's fine. Maybe it's okay. Whatever. You go, well, I just, I don't see myself as greatness or huge potential. I just see myself as fine. So I'm just going to, just going to sit back and take it. And when you do that, I think there's always something in the back of your mind that's kind of ticking and kind of reminding you and asking the question, well, there's got to be something more, right? Like there's always something in the back of your mind going, I feel like I'm just settling. Like what if I was made for something more. And are you excited, I want to ask, to live life and to dive into the awesomeness, or do you not even see it? Do you not even see the potential in your own life? So how you view yourself and your intentionality and your purpose matters. So how, how do you view yourself, church? How, how do you, when you look at yourself in the mirror, how do you view your intention or your purpose in life? What's the truth behind where you've come from and with your faith? What if there's more that makes you than what you see in the world? What if there's more that makes up each and every person in the room than what you see in the reflection in the mirror or what you see in the world or what people are telling you? What if you were made for more? So we're gonna go back all the way to the very beginning tonight. We wanna go all the way back to Genesis chapter one to the beginning of creation, literally like made from God's eye view, like the overarching, we get to look down from like the way that God looked at the world when he created things. So we want to go all the way back to the beginning to Genesis chapter one, verse 27. And we're going to dive in right here 
and to the truth of what does it look like. And it says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. I don't know about you, but that sounds a little bit redundancy, or redundant, and it sounds a little churchy. Like, so God created mankind in his own image. What, is, what does that mean? Um, it might not sound too incredible, and if you've been around church a lot, we throw these words around like, oh, you're, you're made in the image of God. You're made in the image of God. What, what does that mean? And we get it from this verse of Genesis chapter, 27, or chapter 1, verse 27. God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. We get it. God created But let's dive into that a little bit more and let's lean in and look at a couple of the words and what those words mean. And this is a little bit of like a a word study. So bear with me if this isn't your thing, but I promise there's a point behind it because we're going to pick apart some of the words and take it back to the original translation in Hebrew and some other translations and say, what what is this verse really getting at? And so the first word I want us to look at is God. God created mankind in his own image. And when you look at the word God, if you translate it all the way back, The Hebrew word for that is Elohim. And Elohim, literally translated to English, means mighty one. And so all of a sudden you reread that first verse, God created mankind in his own image. The mighty one created mankind in his own image. Takes on a little bit of a different meaning. It puts a characteristic on God, and this is one of the names of God that's used in the Old Testament. There's a couple different names for God that mean different things. Yahweh, I mean, a lot lot of different Hebrew words, but this verse is Elohim, the mighty one, created mankind in his own image. And then we skip a little little bit farther on in the verse. God created mankind in his own image. What does that mean? It's a catchy word. It's a catchy phrase we can throw around, but image, I looked up three different translations for it. The first one is uh, selim. T-S-E-L-E-M, and that's translated all the way back to the Hebrew word. And in Hebrew, that means resemblance. God created mankind in his own resemblance. If you look at the Amplified Bible, it says his own resemblance and likeness. And then if you look at the message translation, God created mankind reflecting God's own nature. And so you see some different meanings. You see some meat get around this verse of what could it mean? What what does it mean to be made in the image of God? That's a really pretty catchphrase, but it means this. It means that we are made, the mighty one created mankind to resemble him, to have the nature of God in his likeness. And so that whole verse would read, the mighty one created mankind, us, you and me, to resemble and reflect and be like that same might. So now all of a sudden we're talking about how we're made and the image that we get from God's eye view of when he was creating. And that begins to mean something. If you believe you're made in the image of God, the mighty one that he created you with might, that so we can begin to reflect the very nature of God in our own lives. And it's not just strength for ourselves. We don't get strength and that mightiness from God just to keep for ourselves, but we get it so that we can go do something with that same strength in our lives. You're made to resemble and reflect the mighty one in our lives. Let that sink in for a minute. You're made to resemble and reflect and be like and have that like-mindedness of strength and might in your life. Who do you look like? Who do you take after? We take after the mighty one who created us and made us on purpose for that reason. And you can think about your own life. Who do you look like? Who do you think like? Who do you, who do you take after? Look at your own family. For me, when I think about that, I look to, to my daughters, Adeline and Ansley. And uh, Adeline's almost two years old. And so she's getting a little bit more personality than Ansley. She's like 11 weeks old. So she's still kind of learning about personality and getting there. But she smiled this week. So that was really cute. Um, but I look at Adeline, who's got that personality developing. And She's got the same kind of silliness. She's got a similar humor to me. She's got some sassiness from Kayla. She, uh, she has the same mannerisms as Kayla and I. She kind of acts and walks and talks and laughs the same way. She loves adventures. She loves anything outside. I love anything outside. So who does she take after? Who does she look like? She's got little bits and pieces. She resembles Kayla and I. And so then I want us to think, if we're created by our Heavenly Father, do we resemble God's characteristics in a similar way? And so for that first verse, are we resembling strength and might and passion in the same way as we resemble each other in our families? Because it can change the way you relate to yourself. 
It can change the way you relate to your self-esteem and the way you view yourself because your mighty insecurity and trying to be good enough can take a back seat. That doesn't have to win the day because you're made in the image of the mighty one. And mighty means that you have power over things and you get to create something with that power. It's incredible. It means we get to do something. And so not only are we made to resemble and made in the image of a mighty God, we're made to be intentional and it was thought out very intentionally. And so a little while later in scripture, we get a guy named David and David writes a Psalm. He writes a lot of different Psalms, but David's writing this Psalm to God, praising God for how we're made. And so we kind of fast forward a while and David's thanking God for creating us in his image. And he says some things very intentionally that I want us to look at. It says this in Psalm 139, for you created my innermost being, God did. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full and well. And the verse goes on. It's not on the screens, but just one more line I wanted to add. It says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made. And so this verse is really talking about how we were made. I was fearfully and wonderfully made by you, God. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made. God knows it was intentional. Do you know that full well like this verse ends? I know that full well. Do you know that full well for your life? Do you live like that's true? If somebody followed you around for a day, would they see you living this out? Would they see that strength, that purpose, that fearfully and wonderfully made? Would they see that lived out in your day-to-day life? Or would they see us taking a back seat or not really sure how we're made? So we're just okay. Like, I don't want to push the limits. I don't want to like affect too much. No, we want to make a difference. But would somebody see that? This verse tells you about yourself. And what does it tell you? It tells you it was intentional, that you're known, that you were created on purpose and for a purpose. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew your frame, your innermost being the entire time. And so for us, our series starts here. Our discussion about made starts right here, understanding the weight and the intentionality behind how and why you were made. You need to know how God feels about you and what you were made for before we can even have the discussions next week and the week after we start here and say you were made by a mighty God on purpose and for a purpose, fearfully and wonderfully made. And there's a truth here, friends, that what you do with this truth is up to you. You have a choice to make. We can walk out of here and go, well, that's nice to hear. And I know this is true about you because it's true about me. It's nice to hear this stuff. And we can say, yeah, like I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. I am made with the mighty God and I'm made in his image. Yeah, 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 great, great, great. Walk out of here and then life smacks you in the face. Something happens, something drama, doubt creeps in, drama happens, maybe a failure happens. And all of a sudden, that great feeling that we all can feel and that celebratory like made in the image of God, yeah, that can go right out the window and we can forget it because we don't always believe and feel that this is true in our lives. We have questions. And like we said earlier, when we look at ourselves, we compare, we critique, we judge, we're hard on ourselves. We set unattainable standards. So we just back down. But what if you saw yourself? What if you treated yourself? What if you loved yourself the way that you see God working in other people? Hmm. We're so good at seeing God in other people and treating other people well like, and treating other people like they have potential, but we're so bad at seeing that same exact stuff in ourselves. We say, well, I see the image of God in them. I see the resemblance or the nature of God in them, but, but not in me. We almost never see it in ourselves. They're made for greatness, but I'm not made that way. I don't always feel like I'm made in the image of God. I don't always feel like I have that might or that strength from God. There's times where I mess up and where I'm just guessing where it's not all together, but we, we can remember in those moments this fact. When we start questioning, when we forget this truth, when life happens, we remember fearfully, wonderfully made, made in the image of God, and that is empowering. It gives us strength to make changes when you need to make changes because you're not stuck. You have strength, not for strength's sake for just yourself, but so that you can be empowered and so that you can impact those around you with that strength. And I want us to think about this statement that's going to pop up on the screen just as we get ready to wrap up tonight. It's this idea that we are made in the resemblance of the mighty one who used his power to create something great. That is true. We're made in the image of, in the resemblance of the mighty one.
who used his power to make something great. That's you and that's me. God created something great. That's your ancestry of you and God. That's your ancestry and your origin story of your faith of how he made and what God thinks about you. And then I want to add this next line that says, so we can too. We can create something great too. Because we know our identity, because we know how we've been made and what we're made for, we can make something great out of life too. If we've been made, then we can make. We can do something with our lives. And so for the next couple of weeks, we're going to take it one step further. Next week, Casey's going to get to, to preach and, and deliver the message next week, and I'm going to be at youth group. But uh, next week's going to answer the question of, so what? So what if we're made in the resemblance of the mighty God that used his power to create something great? So, so what does that mean for us? Why does it matter? What does this have to do with us? And I'll tell you, just, this week just sets the stage. There's more to the made story than what we just talked about tonight. This is just setting the stage. There's so much more. So I encourage excuse me, I encourage you to come back, be a part of that. Because this is a great message to hear. You are made in the image of God. You're made mighty. Somebody in this room needs to hear that you've got that strength. You're not stuck. You can do something great. But other of us, other of us in the room are going, I got that. That sounds great. That's good. I remember that. So what? What's next? So we want to dive into that with you next week and the week after that and say, well, if this is true, if we're made like this, what does that mean for our lives? How do we respond? How do we act differently? How do we live differently? And tonight we get to take communion in just a moment. And communion will look at the message that Jesus taught in his ministry. And I want us tonight to look at it in a little special light of saying, uh, God didn't, Jesus didn't spend his time with the high and mighty. Jesus didn't stand with the religious leaders all the time. Jesus went to the people who were at the lowest of lows, people who counted themselves out, and said, well, I, I'm not made for greatness. I'm not made for that. They didn't realize how they were made. They didn't realize their potential. And Jesus said, well, let me remind you who you are. Let me remind you whose you are, who created you, and with what kind of power. Jesus went to them and reminded them of their worth and their strength from God. And so communion is a time for us to remember that strength and that worth from God. And what Jesus taught at the Last Supper, when he got around a table and he looked at his disciples and they shared that moment together. And so Casey's going to come up forward and help me out a little bit with communion in just a second. And I want us to remember it with that kind of light of Jesus. Who did Jesus hang out with? Who did he break bread with? Who did he have communion with? Not the people that had it all together, not the people that were good and, and just perfect. No, he had communion with the people that needed to be reminded of how they were made and who they were made to be for. And so communion for us in the Methodist Church is open to anybody and uh, you, anybody can partake and you can come up and you receive a piece of bread and you dip it in the cup. But what I love about communion is Jesus got to sit at a table with his disciples and he took the bread and he held it up and he said, this is my body broken for you. Every time you eat of this, remember me. And likewise, he took the cup. And after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of that, remember Jesus. Remember who he hung out with. Remember the promises that he made and the declarations that God makes about your life and my life. And so that's the heart that I would love for us to come to communion with. And as you take it, ask God to show you reminders of the way that you've been made in the image of God. Ask God to show you reminders of being fearfully and wonderfully made in your life as you take communion. Take it, head back to your seat, spend some time in prayer, asking God to show you fearfully and wonderfully made. Really show me that, God. Casey, would you pray for us? Yeah, let's pray. God, we thank you that you create space and time for us to come together and to meet with you and to meet with each other, Lord. And God, we just come tonight in all different kinds of places, but no matter what our week's been like or what we're dealing with at home or at work or just in the real world and life, God, we know that you're there with us. And Lord, life can get us sometimes. And sometimes it doesn't feel like we're made in your image. Sometimes it doesn't feel like we're made for that much more. But God, thank you that your word reassures us that we are made in the image of the mighty one who used his power to create something better. And so, God, in the areas of our lives where we need to hear that, would you speak that straight to our hearts tonight? God, as we come and receive communion, would this just be a time that we get to reflect with you, that we have a moment with you, that we have a connection with you, to remember that, just like Corey said, you, Jesus, gathered disciples who 
we're just like us. We're ordinary people with an extraordinary savior and you ate with them and you had a meal with them and you gave your life for them and you rose again for them. And so Lord, would you bless this time? Would you bless this communion? Would you let it be something that reminds us of who you are and that we belong to you? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Communion servers, you guys can come forward to receive and then we'll dismiss in just a moment.